amused right now. I am not amused. So, 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 before we get into this book discussion, I'm gonna, gonna kick you in on something that just happened five minutes ago. Now, as you know on this channel, I kind of really cut back on a lot of the book reviews because, like, I didn't want to just, I found out making videos just to make videos and it's like, I like the book but I wasn't inspired by this book or I didn't think it was all like, I could talk about it so I stopped making book review videos. So, I just finished reading We Were Lives by E. Lockhart and I get ready to film. So, I finished this on Sunday, no, Saturday, it is now Monday and I wanted to like process the book. I was gonna film like right after I read it. Well, you know, the emotions are still deep inside of me, but I was like, no, because, you know, usually after you film right away, then you remember things you should have said, and then you're like, oh, shoot, I should have said that. So, I keep a very good, like, note document on my laptop of, like, everything I'm going to say, and I, like, planned it out. It's very deep and insightful and inspiring, and I go, this is the thing. To this morning, I go to try to make it like into a word file because like it's too small for me to read. And I do the command buttons and instead of pushing command C to copy, you can see where this is going, I push command V and it deletes it! Everything is gone! Like everything! And I'm just saying like, what just happened? So I'm trying to like do undo it or like sorry, you can't undo this file. I was like, of course! The one time you want to undo something, you can't undo it. It's just like permanent. And you're like, what? <laughs> so, that happens. So now we're just going to wing this book talk. And I'm going to watch this later and be like, wow, I should have said all this crap. And it's like, well, I can't because I deleted my notes. On one of those days, I'm just, I'm just driving the struggle bus. Have you ever had those days? <laughs> so... First of all, I have no eyelashes on Harley. It looks like I have no eyelashes on right now because I went to go put on mascara and it dried up on me and just like emptied. I don't know what happened to it. Just it didn't work anymore. So rant over. Let's talk about this book. So if you haven't known already, we are discussing today We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. And I like this book. I, I went into it knowing what happened. So this is gonna be all spoilers. So if you haven't read it, you need to just turn this off, go read, then come back. Cause like, there's not even much I can say without spoiling it. They, even in the synopsis, they can't even give you much without spoiling it. There's like books. There's like books that you love. There's books you like. There's books that make you cry. And then there are some books that just, they just haunt you. Like you, after you read them, you can't just sit there and you just stare like, what did I just read? Because they're just, so good like that and this was one of those books like after I read this I kind of just like wandered around my house like what do I do what is life have I done other things with my life or no so we were liars I knew what happened I got spoiled and I kind of wish I didn't get spoiled but at the same time so I knew they were all dead at the end I thought they were all dead apparently they're not all dead it's just like three of them were dead but I thought they were all dead but I just didn't know how so I mean it was still interesting to the point where I got I got to like see like oh how did this happen what happened and I didn't know how they died until we actually read it so I mean I was still surprised it was just like uh, I didn't know what happened when you heard accident, I kept thinking like maybe a car accident. So I mean, I didn't know how it happened. So there was surprise in that. I was confused though because I didn't think ghosts or hallucinations, even though I knew they were dead the whole time. But at the same time, I was always that's why I was always confused because like, wait, if the accident happened in fifteen, how about seventeen? So then I started thinking maybe like something with her happened in fifteen, and then seventeen happened, and that's when the main thing happened, or. They all died in summer 15 and now they're kind of just like reliving it as ghosts and hallucinations. Like, I don't know. So, I mean, I was still surprised. It's just, I wish I would have known how surprised I would have been like not knowing <laughs> what was going to happen. Let's talk about this stupid plan. So, I get what they were trying to do. They were trying to like burn this house down because it was just becoming like the center of chaos in the family. Like everybody was arguing and they thought maybe this would bring the family together. And in a sense it did, but just not in the sense they originally wanted it to. So when I first read the plan of the Umbert house, I took this as they were gonna like drench it in gasoline and then when they're all out, then throw the fire at it. But when I'm reading this and I find out like she's 
they're doing different floors. I mean, first I was like, what? It shouldn't matter. Like, you just do one floor and it's just gonna, the flames are gonna rise. But then I thought maybe they just want to make sure everything gets destroyed. So then when she just throws the fire on it, while people are still inside, I'm thinking, wait, I thought maybe, like, she had a moment of confusion. Like, I, like, I didn't picture, I thought this was, like, maybe after her accident. So I thought, Maybe she just forgot. But no, the plan was is that they would all drench it and then she would start the fire. How stupid is this plan? Like, I'm pretty sure. Like, these people, they're like Harvard bound smart. And if you're gonna commit arsenal, you need to learn how to do it right. Like, I thought there would be like all they would all get together and then throw it. Like, it's one thing if they just did it in sections and then she went in, did her part, and then threw it in. But no, she just threw the fire in when there were still people inside. Like, like I said, if you're gonna commit arsenal and you're gonna start a fire, you do it the right way. You just, you are Harvard bound people and yet you don't know how to start a fire. That plan, why? Like, why? Then she's like, I never knew it was breath fast. You just spread gasoline over a whole house. Do you not think it's not going to start up fast? Like, gasoline is, like, dangerous with fire. I was very frustrated with this book. So then we find out that when she figures it out, that they were not really there the whole time. So, where is where? Wouldn't her family, though, notice that she went to, to Kodan? Kodan? I don't know. Kodan? I don't know how to pronounce it. These names are all gonna be wrong. Just to win. like, would her family notice? I don't know because then when they noticed, like, she was talking herself. I mean, it makes sense why they weren't at dinner at night, but <sighs> so like that's the question: Are they ghosts or the hallucinations? So I, in one sense, you might think they're ghosts because Kate says how she has like this envelope of roses and stuff, or these purple petals that they gave her. But the purple petals, pebbles, pebbles, rocks could be like from her cousins and she just for some reason pictured it from Marine. Marine. Mari Marine. Marine. Marin? You never know. She could have been like doing it herself, but just not processing she's doing it. like there's times where like she's like I think like she said the headaches were just so bad. You never know. That's when she could have been doing so I don't know. But then like they also say had time she could she was high because she was on these painkillers. So she could have easily hallucinated this stuff and just from the trauma of the event caused these hallucinations. But then it's weird when she kept saying like, Oh, when they hugged me I and stuff and like they she said she could feel them, but then again, even if you were a ghost, I don't think you'd be able to feel them. So it kind of probably would be hallucinations. And the fact is, we notice that the characters never once changed their clothes throughout the whole book. Marie's always in her bathing suit. Gat is always in this like green t-shirt, but they never once change it. And at first, I think this was just like I thought this was just like a standard like book thing. Like you never you always know like books like the characters are usually described once in appearance, or you know they always have that one thing they're known for. And I figured okay maybe that's just this, but no, it's because they're hallucinations. Of course they're not gonna grow. Cadence is only gonna remember how she last saw them. And then we understand why the grandfather kind of keeps calling Marine and like he's kind of um having dementia problems is because probably the accident was just so traumatic it caused that and another thing is it's like their family they're like the perfect family like they can't mess up like everything's a dream life is perfect so when something like this happens that's not perfect they have to cover up which they lied to themselves which comes to cover title we are liars you don't really understand why the group themselves are called liars maybe because they were like mischievous children or something like that but we understand why the title is called we were liars because the family lied about what happened but ultimately cadence is to me the biggest lie of all. She's not only lying to herself, but she's lying to the readers, which also brings back to the unreliable narrator, which technically though she's not lying because she just can't remember, but still, she's still lying to herself thinking, oh, they're still here, they're still here, nothing happened. So she is lying to herself almost every day about what really happened. But Cadence is to me the biggest lie of all. She's lying to herself about what really happened, what really went down, where the characters really are, and what really happened to them, which is kind of weird because in, I think it was the summer 15, they were talking about funerals. If it was the summer of 17, 
it would make sense why they might have been talking about funerals and maybe even her brain like subconsciously remembering what happened but she's just not realizing it actually did happen and then we understand why the littles what yeah the littles they were why they kept saying oh cold down is haunted it's haunted and you don't get why you just think oh maybe it's just like some little like kid thing like you know every kid thinks something is haunted in their life and it would kind of support the idea that maybe they're ghosts but then again why is only kids only able to interact with them so it was, it's interesting perspective here. But then, Katie keeps saying she's like, oh, the liars are lying to me. They're going off and doing stuff. They're going to do stuff. But really, they're not. It's just her imagination. But we have that one part where they go, I think it was kayaking or canoeing or something. But they go and they climb up that rock and they jump. And they keep telling Katie, don't do it. Don't do it. But yet, Johnny and Gat do it and they're fine. But we realize she's imagining this. And then if you read that part in that paragraph, that, that last chapter says, in a parallel universe, Johnny would have break his back or something like they would have been dead. And so part of me was starting to think then, after knowing like all the characters are dead, I started to think like, well, maybe Johnny and Gad did die and this is how they died. And like, she hit her head and now she can't remember. I started to think maybe like that, but no, maybe it was just her brain trying to like edge her on like this is what happened this isn't real this isn't real it makes sense to why we never answer emails so a lot of this start to make sense of why we were like huh like how she's like oh they went and answer my calls and you start to think well maybe they're just like you know you know those people like they're only like friends by circumstances so like in the summer they're the best of friends but when they go off into their own lives they're just like living their own lives and they kind of forget about each other and that's not the case here. And then the last lines of this book says, My full name is Candace St. Clair Eastman. I suffer migraines. I do not suffer fools. I like twist of meaning I endure. These are kind of like just the first lines of chapter like two where she kind of says like, oh, I'm 18. But let's also draw in the line of I like twist meanings. Like this book is like the biggest twist of all. Like you're reading this and you're thinking, oh, just this is a story of what happened. But ultimately, the biggest twist came when they all died in the fire. And then you start to realize that, and she, you know, she likes metaphors, so she's always like, for example, the first time where she's like, oh, my father pulled out the gun and shot me. He didn't actually shoot her, but that's what it felt like to her. And that's, so that's a twist. And, and then you read those fairy tale stories, and at first you think, okay, these are just fairy tale stories she's writing, but then as you get smarter, you realize that they are actually the story of what happened. So maybe she was like subconsciously still writing. Like, I think she subconsciously knew all along. It just took a while for her to realize it. Because the minute she realizes what actually happened, the liars disappear. And that's one thing where you might think they're ghosts, because I feel like if they were hallucinations, they would just be gone the minute she realizes what happened. But at the same time, they might have been hallucinations still because it was kind of her way of saying goodbye to them. I don't know what happened. It was just, it's really weird. And I think that's why when at the end, all the characters like Johnny gives off, he gives her his shirt and stuff. It's kind of like, I feel like they're going away because she kind of took everything that they were known for and kind of like gave that away almost. And I feel like at first I thought maybe Kate Isson was actually dead. Because like I said, she's on reliable narrator, so maybe she thinks she's living. I mean, this is a far out theory, but then how she kept giving away her stuff, I thought, well, maybe she's not actually giving away her stuff just because she's dead, all her stuff is given away, and she thinks she's doing it. But I don't think that's actually a legit theory, but it was just a theory I had in my brain. So, yeah, like I said, I'll probably do part two maybe if I, like, think of things that I forgot about in my notes. It was just, this book was amazing. I loved this book. I enjoyed it. Like, I literally, after I finished, I texted my friend, like, have you ever heard of the book We Are Alive? She's like, no, I'm like, you need to read it. Like, just read it. It's so good. Like I said, I enjoyed this book. I cried, even though I knew what was going to happen. I want a book two, but I don't think it's even possible to have a book two. But yeah, I do. I cried my eyes out. I'm going to give it maybe, I don't know, like, I want to give it a five out of five star, but at the same time, it's like, it didn't keep me at the edge of my seat. Like, the beginning did, and then the middle was, like, slow, and then... The ending was just wow, and so i probably give it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. So, yeah, we were liars. I probably will film a part 2 because I will remember everything else. Well, actually, and 2, like, I thought, like, maybe Cadence was dead too because they, can't, they kind of talked to her in past tense at times. So I thought, oh, maybe she was just dead. But then there was also times where... She's like, oh, I had dinner with the Lils. I was like, why weren't you having dinner with the liars? And now we know. And so, 
Yeah, I kind of want to go back and reread. Like, even though I know I kind of already read it from the perspective of knowing what happens, I kind of want to go back and reread it and know fully what happens, and maybe I can even draw more from it. Anyways, that was it. I make booktube videos. Uh, please subscribe to my channel if you want more booktubish videos. Uh, give this video a big thumbs up. Tell me in the comments below what you thought of the ending. Were you surprised by it? Were you spoiled by it? Let me know. Thank you for watching. Bye!